Hi, I've just done a tasting of 59 Rieslings from Eden Valley and Clare Valley and I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about the differences in the two regions because obviously they're both in South Australia uh, but they're very, very different in terms of the wines that they create. So I have a selection of wines here that stood out as being very, very good in that tasting and I just wanted to walk you through some of the key differences in the two regions. So. Firstly, um, if we look at Eden Valley, and, and this is the first wine that we have on, on the table, it's the 2021 Riesling Freak number 12. They've all got a different number, number 12, um, from Flaxman Valley. So Eden Valley is above the Barossa Valley. And if you think about the Barossa zone as being one region split into two, so there's the Eden Valley region and the Barossa Valley region, there's only one sub-region within that entire area, and that's High Eden within the Eden Valley. So the Eden Valley is higher than the Barossa Valley, and it sits at about 440 to 490 metres above sea level. The soils are skeletal podzolic soils, and when you go there, you can really get a sense of the place with these rocks that just kind of burst through um, the fields and the vineyards. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing, actually. You kind of crunch over quartz and granite and all these other things, and you get an idea that these wines are going to be mineral, they're going to be austere, they're going to be lean, um, and they are, but they also have a really beautiful floral character to them. So this one here, um, I described this like a yacht as it catches the breeze and sails noiselessly across the ocean. That's what this wine is like. It's streamlined, it's felt, it's precise, and it's got that gorgeous feeling that you get when you cut through paper and you don't rip it. That, that anything is possible feeling. That's how this Riesling feels. In terms of flavours, it's really taut and tense and mineral. And there's a spiral of acidity that runs through this wine. It's incredibly beautiful um, and very, very tight. And the 2021 vintage, which we're looking at across these four wines, is really responsible for that tension because it was a cool, long, even vintage. And the vignerons picked when they were ready to pick, not when they were forced to do so. So the wines are very high quality. Moving into the second wine, this is by a producer called Jim Barry, who's a key producer in the Clare Valley. And the Clare Valley, um, by contrast to the Eden Valley, has both very low points at 100 sort of metres, 190 metres sort of, sorry, above sea level, um, right up to 610 metres above sea level. So you can see it's lower down and higher up than the Eden Valley. There's something like 230 millimetres of um, average rainfall each growing season. And it can get very hot during the day and very cold at night, um, like 40 plus during the day and one degree at nighttime on the same day. The diurnal range there is wild. Uh, and talking about the soils, there's 11 different soil types that are in, in, um, in the Clare Valley, but the key ones, I suppose, are Polish Hill River is broken slate and Watervale has got a, a limestone subsoil. So you can see both in elevation and soil types that these two places are very, very different. Um, and certainly in style, where you have austere, lean, mineral, shaley characters in Eden Valley, you get generosity and plushness and volume and density in the Clare Valley. Uh, and that is really evident in this wine. So this is the 2021 Jim Barry Florita Riesling, which is a key Riesling in Australia never more so when looked through the vintage lens of 2021. I love this wine because it harnesses all of the generosity and the volume that the Clare Valley is really capable of giving so easily, but it really restrains it and harnesses it and, and gives it a, a mineral tension. This will be a very, very long-lived wine, but most of it will never see that time. Most people are just going to buy this wine and drink it in its early years and I think that that will be a great shame because it's a really wonderful great wine. Swinging back into the Eden Valley, this wine, um, the Pusey Vale 2021 Riesling, this is a, um, a, a famous wine in Australia because it's very cheap every year, it's sort of $25 a bottle, um, but it's very, very high quality and on the nose <clears throat> it's got a really talky floral like spring flowers and crushed crushed um, slate sort of character nose. It's so refreshing. And I think that um, perhaps it's just suggestion, but I do drink this wine a fair bit in summer. And um, to me, this just smells like a very hot day with a very cold glass of Riesling. It's just about perfect. It's age-worthy. It's clear to sight 
It's clear. It's a variety. It's a really exciting wine and it's really good value for money. Now, moving into the fourth and fifth wine, this is the Mesh Riesling. So this is a collaboration between Jeffrey Grosset of, um, of the Clare Valley, the master Riesling master in Australia, and Michael Hill-Smith. Now, he owns – Michael, sorry, Robert Hill-Smith. Robert owns Yolumba. It's a major producer in uh, the Barossa Valley. Also has a, a big distribution company called Negociants. He's really well respected and widely liked in the Australian wine industry. And this wine is a collaboration between those two men. Um, it's routinely good. It's Eden Valley. So it's kind of exciting for all the Riesling nerds because you get to see what Jeffrey Grosset can do in a region that isn't his home turf. And Clare Valley is his home turf. This wine is incredibly impressive. And it's because it's really streamlined and focused and it's got precision and minerality and they are really important things for raising because when they age you don't want the fruit to start to fall apart it needs to be tight in the early days because it doesn't have things like oak or tannin necessarily to fortify it so it needs everything to be in perfect precision early and that is <clears throat> i mean that is just such a smart wine so impressed Never more so when you look at it beside its sibling from 2015. So this is the 2015 museum release, which has just come out now. Um, and this really shows us what older Riesling can do because what we often hear people say is um, characters like kerosene or diesel or fusel or all those characters, they're bad characters, right? That comes from sun exposure while the fruit's hanging on the vine. And you don't want diesel or kerosene in your Riesling. You want it to taste toasty and complex and spicy and really layered with all these really exciting delicious flavors you don't want diesel or kerosene in the riesling it's an exposed fruit character it's not good this doesn't have that this is pristine and it feels as if it has barely mo moved i mean it is like it's spicy and it's toasty and there's all of the beautiful minerality still there from this first wine, but it's just, it's got more. It's got more density. It's got more weight. It's got more flavor, actually. And most importantly, through the finish, there's no cracking or fragmenting of fruit. Now, um, that's a difficult thing to explain if you haven't tried it or tasted that before. But what I mean is sometimes when fruit through the finish of a Riesling that's starting to fall apart goes into like, wax, lanolin, um, cheesecloth, cheese rind. You get all of these kind of characters through the finish that don't sit with this beautiful svelte streamlined wine that you tasted at the very front of it. And, and that's when the wine has probably gone a little bit beyond what it's capable of. This wine has got another 10 years to go with ease, um, which is a very impressive thing for a reason that is so cheap. Um, so I hope that that's kind of helped you. Eden Valley, um, Austere, taut, lean, coiled, sometimes floral, always minerally, really beautiful wines. Clare Valley is generous, voluminous. There's lime flesh, there's apples, um, much more generous kind of rounded wines, very powerful um, and really great. It's been a really good day for Riesling for me. I hope that you're drinking great Riesling. Wine nerds are always trying to push Riesling onto their friends. I'm one of them. I hope that you are too.